Okay, welcome to the first science demonstration on this channel. That's aside from my lessons in science and math, and we're going to talk about model rockets. First, I'm going to go over the equipment and then do some demonstrations with the engines, and then we're going to go outside and watch them. First, the equipment. Now this equipment you can get in any hobby store. You're going to want a rocket, which is going to come with a parachute, and you can buy them in sets. You want a launch pad. I have two launch pads here. I'll tell you the difference between them, other than the size, of course. You're going to want engines. These are solid chemical engines, and I'll explain more about that as well. Then we have wadding, we have igniters and plugs, and of course we have our ignition system here. Alright, so how this works, this goes on the stand, so this is a small rocket. There's a little straw here that's cut off that you can easily put it on the stand. That would have a parachute. Um, the parachute is going to go inside this end. The engine is going to go inside this end. Let me talk about the engines first. This, I have, the engines have a rating. This one says C6-3. This one is fairly larger, and this is D12-3. Or you can have Bs, As, half As. The letter tells you the overall impulse. The impulse is just a measure of the force applied over a time, and we will analyze the impulse in one of my demonstrations that we'll do later. So the larger, or the greater the letter, the greater the, the, greater the impulse. So for example, C has a much bigger impulse than A. So a C engine on this small rocket and you will never get that rocket back. Probably best use A with this smaller one. Notice we have even smaller engines. This one, for example, is half A, but this size won't fit into this rocket base. This will be for us smaller rockets. And of course, the bigger D and E engines are going to be used with much larger rockets. And if you're using a much larger rocket, then you're going to need a much larger launch pad. So this launch pad I use for half A's all the way up to C's, and then D's, E's, and, and F's, I use this one. However, if you're going up to an F rocket, it's a different type of engine, and you will need a different type of ignition system. And if you're interested, let me know in the comments, and I'll do that in another episode. All right, so the engine goes in here, like so. So now that the engine does, let me explain the other two numbers. For example, this is C6-5. Six, six is the approximate impulse in Newton seconds. Five is the number of seconds of delay. So what happens is, is your rocket shoots up. This will go up for a few seconds and then the engine will cut off. It'll still have an upwards velocity, so it'll continue to go up, but gravity will be slowing it down. Five seconds later, there's a reverse blast on the other side. Why would you want to reverse blast on the other side? Well, that's where the parachute comes in. The parachute is in here. So you wanna hold it up nicely, so it comes out nicely. And stick it in there with the nose cap on. So, however, you needed wadding in there first. The reason why you need wadding in there first is because that reverse blast, which shoots off the top, will set the parachute on fire. Now, the wadding looks like paper, but it's paper that won't set on fire. 
so it protects your parachute from burning. And if you want your rocket to come down safely, you're going to want some wadding and you just sort of push it into a ball and stick it in. And you can put in your parachute safely so it will come out in one piece. All of your cords in there, which attach those and the parachute to the main rocket fuselage. All right, now this goes on your launch pad. How are you going to actually ignite it? You're obviously not going to take a match and light it. That shouldn't be so, so close to it. So what we have is this igniter. This is two wires which meet at a tip, which is going to have very, very high resistance, which is going to start a spark. Now that needs to go in there, but it just falls out. So to stop it from falling out, you need a plug. Take a plug, put it in there, keep it in. Now this is where this comes into play. Notice that this wire is very, very long. You can use the entire length to be as far away as possible from the rocket. At one end, two clips. We would attach each clip to each wire. Make sure the clips aren't touching or you won't get a current going to the tip of your igniter. I'm not going to do this here, we're going to do this later. Outside, not inside. All right, well, I'll use another neither, just to show you what it looks like. Let's take this one out. If I attach the clips to it, so it's not attached to the engine, so I won't ignite the engine here. Then you can move far away then you have this. That's a button to launch. And a key. This is a safety item. You need to have the key in there and push inwards. If everything is connected correctly, there'll be a light that comes on. When the light's on, it's ready to launch. Push the button and away it goes. So we're going to move on to the first set of demonstration where I used a fume hood and we're going to ignite the engine without the rocket and the fume hood and we'll see how that works. And then we'll attach it to a force sensor to analyze the impulse from that engine. Then we'll go outside and have some fun. Here's a demonstration we're going to start off with. This is our engine. This is a C6-5 engine. This is a force sensor, which in the next demonstration, we'll hook this up to a computer to actually analyze the forces that are acting on the force sensor to that engine over time. Then I have this hooked up. Yes, I am inside. Do not do this inside. This is a fume hood. So I have an air vent on. It's going to take all the fumes you produce by this outside. Okay, let's do this. So you can see I put the key in push down, lights up, and ready to go. Three, two, one. All right, now let's hook that up to a computer. So now we're going to watch the same demo, but I've attached the force sensor, and we're gonna watch the data with it. So when you hit play, since it's a little bit off, it launches, you get that huge initial spike for takeoff, then it lowers, and right here, there's a little blip at the end, which sends out the parachute. So here we have, in the middle, is most of the um, thrust as it's going upwards, and before the little blip where the parachute um, gets shot out. There's no real force, but it's got such high upward momentum, it's still moving upward as it's slowing down. Now, if we're to look at 
the impulse, right, which is um, force uh, multiplied by time, we can find the area. Since this is not a constant force, we can find the area under the graph to see the impulse on this P65 engine. We'll just highlight that important part. And we can find the area, which is at 6.7 newton seconds. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. That one worked well. What the hell dropped out of it? I think there was water in it. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. I feel it's gonna like fall in my head. <laughs> the rocket, it wasn't just like oh, a blast, it? but actually had a flame on it. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Oh, it's dry.